Welcome to today's video, and it's Friday night, so once again, a sim racing video. Tonight, I thought I would talk about the soft lock option in both the Dirt Rally games, one and two, have this soft lock option. It's, I'm not gonna call it an advanced setting, but you might not know what it is, and for those of you that don't know what it is, you're missing a big part of the experience of, of these, these two rally sims, in my opinion, uh, because it really does change the way each car drives you know and, and makes it more realistic as well so to me it's important that i have it on and that i have it set up right and i think it's important that you should all know how to do this you know if you don't or maybe you have the option on but you don't know what it's for or maybe you can't turn it on because you're getting a, a message beside the soft lock saying calibrate your wheel uh, and you're not quite sure why you need to calibrate it or maybe you haven't calibrated it so i thought i'd just walk you through the the procedure and explain you know, very briefly what it is that it does. So first of all, soft lock. I've also, when I, um, in my Dirt Rally setup videos for Thrustmaster wheelbases and Logitech wheelbases, I do explain it in there as well. But this is, this is for every, it doesn't matter what you're using, Fnatic, you know, um, a direct drive wheel, my cat's about to stand on the keyboard, excuse me. Um, yeah, it applies, it applies to everybody, um, no matter what hardware you're using. So, soft lock, um, it sets a, so every, every wheel has a physical lock to lock limitation, um, usually measured in degrees if you're looking at the, the spec of your wheel. So it would say 900 degrees, 1080 degrees, something along those lines. In real life, I tend to refer to steering lock in, in numbers of turns. So how many turns it takes to go from lock to lock. Uh, I work on a lot of old classic Fords. They're typically four and a half turns from full left lock to full right lock. Of the steering wheel and if i was to fit you know a quaif quick rack that might only be two and a half turns from lock to lock so that's why it's called a quick rack as well because the wheels literally turn further faster with the same steering input now every car has a different lock as far as number of turns it needs to go from fully left to fully right um, all our wheel bases out there whether you're on a logitech g920 or on a direct drive wheel they all have a physical number of maximum rotations as well. Now in Dirt Rally, every car has been implemented with its real life lock to lock um, for, for each car in the game. That didn't come out very clear, did it? You know what I mean? Like if you're driving an old 80s car with no power steering, it's gonna have more turns lock to lock. Road cars, this is. Race cars, obviously, you will be different because you put a quicker rack on. Yeah, so an old 80s car might be four and a half turns lock to lock, like with the old Fords I work on. Whereas a modern Focus RS, for example, might only be two and a half or three, three, three point two turns lock to lock. And of course, it's power assisted. Now in the game, every single car has that detail included. So if you're driving one of the older vehicles, the old Audi Quattro or something, you have to turn the wheel a lot more, way more times than you would if you were driving, say the, the Focus or Fiesta RS, the little R5. Um, you know, and this is what soft lock does. It adds a soft lock, basically. You've got your physical lock where you've turned the wheel and it won't physically go any further because your wheelbase is at its limit. The game uses the motor or motors in the wheelbase to stop that wheel from turning when it gets to whatever lock the car has that you're driving. So if you're in an old 80s Quattro, um, you may well find you have the full 900 degrees rotation of your wheel because it would use all of that. Uh, and then again, the Fiesta, the R5, you might find you, you only go sort of two and a half turns um, or whatever that relates to. It, it scales based on what wheel you're using, obviously, because some do go further than others. But that's what it does, it adjusts the, the steering um, lock or degrees on a per car basis. And obviously this adds to the overall experience, you know, of, of the simulation way more than if every single car just goes 900, 900 degrees, you know, or 1080, whatever your wheelbase does. Because that's what happens if you don't have soft lock enabled, every single car will use the full rotation of what your wheelbase allows. And for me, that's a bit crap, it's a waste of a really good feature. I like going from an 80s car where I'm having to really throw the wheel around to try and counter steer, which is way more difficult, than then, and then jumping into a modern car where the steering is really sharp and really responsive and you can counter steer, you know, just 
by sort of turning 180 to 180, you know, and, and, and you go back to the 80s car and you're having to go bloody like a, a turn and a half or something to, to get the same amount of counter steer. I really like that because it makes those old 80s cars feel like old 80s cars and it makes the more modern vehicles feel like you're driving a more modern vehicle. Um, so I think this feature is really, really important and I'm really glad Codemasters have included it because it really, it really adds to the overall experience. So let's get um, Dirt Rally on the go <clears throat> and get some screen capture on the go as well, Alt and F9. So you may already know where the options are, but I'll just show you quickly. If you go to Options and Extras on the top right hand side there, and they go down to Input, and you've got your input devices, listed here. So I've got my TSPC racer plugged in right now. So we'll click on that. Oh, sorry, we'll go back one actually. You highlight it, so which I'm doing with a mouse, which is weird. So you highlight it and then you go down to the bottom right hand corner here where it says device options. Yes, and this is where you can then calibrate the wheel. So you must calibrate your wheel, otherwise Dirt Rally 2 doesn't let softlock be activated. Now, I can't remember if this is the same for Dirt Rally 1. Dirt Rally 1 has a soft lock and you want to turn it on just the same. And to be honest, you should always calibrate your, your wheel if it's a new game you've just installed anyway, just to make sure it's as accurate as it can be. But certainly with Dirt Rally 2, it doesn't let you turn full um, soft lock on if you haven't calibrated the wheel. So go through the calibration process. I'm not going to do that because my steering wheel and pedals are across the other side of the room back there and I'm sat here at my desk. So. I'd have to keep going back and forward, which is just silly. I'm sure you can all follow the very basic calibration uh, instructions, turn the steering wheel full lock, press a button, press the pedals down and lift off, press a button, you know, the usual sort of scenario. Once you've done that, you can then come back out and then you can go again with your, your wheel highlighted there, come down to edit device, which is what we went into a second ago. Go over to, is it advanced settings? No, I think it's vibration feedback. Yes, there it is, vibration and feedback and come down here and you see soft lock. You wouldn't be able to turn it on, I'll say that again, if you hadn't just calibrated the, the wheel. So if you come in here and it says you can't turn it on, calibrate the wheel, go back and calibrate your wheel, do as you're told. Um, once you've done that, soft lock on, 100%. 100% means it will use all the available force that your wheelbase has available to stop that wheel from turning once it gets to the simulated full lock of whatever car you're in. Again, if you're in an old 80s car, you'll probably find that it goes all the way around, and hits the physical lock of your wheelbase, because they do only go 900 degrees or maybe 1080 degrees, which isn't that far anyway. But then what you'll find is when you jump in a more modern car, something with really twitchy and responsive steering, you'll find maybe you get to, to 180 or 240, and then, yeah, you can feel that lock. Now, you can push past it on a Thrustmaster or a Logitech, obviously, or even the Fanatic non-DD wheels, you can force past it. You know, you as people, we're way stronger than what the, those motors are. But it's strong enough for you to know that you've hit it. And also, if you are at full lock in Dirt Rally, what are you doing? <laughs> Unless you're going around a hairpin, perhaps, and even then, you should be on the handbrake, counter steering and sliding for the most part. There isn't really many occasions where you genuinely want to be on full lock one way or the other. You know, we tend to slide around corners in rally. You don't tend to just drive around them neatly like you're, like you're doing a three-point turn uh, or reverse around a corner or something weird like that. So you don't really often hit it. But what's more important about this feature is that it adjusts the response of the steering. So whilst you may never hit pardon me, or feel the soft lock engage because you probably won't hit full lock, you'll notice instantly going from an older car to a newer car that the steering's way more responsive and you've got to put much less input into the steering to be able to get around those corners. And that's really, you know, the most important thing about this feature, getting that steering responsiveness functioning rather than every single car having exactly the same feel for the steering. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, you want it 100%, as I say, because if you do hit full lock, you want your, your motors to be able to use all their power to stop you. If you're on a direct drive motor, and this is pure speculation, and you hit the lock, you may, the, the soft lock, you may find you get some, some oscillation there because you, 100, you rarely or never really want to use 100% 
of a direct drive wheel because 25 newton meters, 30 newton meters, 35 newton meters of torque, that's a lot. So yeah, you might find in those situations if you were using a DD wheel and you were to hit the soft lock for whatever car you're in, you might get some oscillation. I don't know that it's just speculation. But for those of us who don't have direct drive, if we're on any of the Thrustmaster wheels, the Fnatic belt-driven ones or a Logitech, you want the motors to use all their available strength to stop you should you hit the lock. So that is pretty much it for today. We'll just recap. Soft lock adjusts the number of turns it takes for the steering wheel to go from lock to lock on a per car basis, giving you either sharper, more responsive steering or less sharp, less responsive steering that requires you to put more steering input to get the desired wheel rotation versus a more modern car. Uh, and the actual soft lock feature is when you get to your maximum rotation, simulated on a per car basis, it will use all the strength of the motor to stop you going any further, at which point your wheels will be at full lock in whichever direction it is. So that's the feature, that's how it works. That's how you set it up and implement it in the game. If you haven't used it before, I really recommend you turn it on, you calibrate the wheel and you use it. Because going from an old car with what I'm gonna call sloppy steering to a new car with pin sharp steering really changes the way the game plays and the cars drive. So I hope you found that interesting and helpful. Um, as always, thanks to everyone that supports the channel. I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Have a nice weekend, take it easy.